Have you ever had an object lesson? I'm pretty sure you have. Either it's been in school or in church, you've had some sort of object lesson. If you've ever enjoyed that object lesson, there's one man you should be thanking. His name is Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi. He was a Swiss philosopher and he was born on January 12, 1746 to Johann Baptist Pestalozzi and his mother. I say his mother because his mother's name is unknown. As a child, Pestalozzi had a very hard time sitting still. He once wrote, Can't you sit still at all? Can't you keep your hands still at all? These were the words I had to hear permanently. I was not a person to sit still. I could not keep my hands still, and the more I should do so, the less I could. And though he was teased throughout his life, he enjoyed learning. And one time... During his years at college, he had a favorite teacher named Johann Jakob Bodmer, who, along with his fellow students, made up a group where they could sit and talk about philosophers. One of his favorites that they talked about was Jean-Jacques Rousseau. It was after Rousseau that he would eventually pattern his educational philosophy. In 1767, Pestalozzi met and Two years later, married Anna Schulfus. When they were married, Pestalozzi enjoyed trying everything. He tried farming and he tried cotton weaving, for example. But he had little business sense and even less feeling for agriculture. And so when his cotton farm in Neuhof failed in 1773, Pestalozzi turned his house into a home for poor children. At his home, he fed and clothed them, taught them to work, and educated them. His desire to help the poor would extend throughout his whole life. He also wrote a book entitled How Gertrude Teaches Her Children. Now, unlike the uh, title suggests, this is not about a woman named Gertrude who teaches her children throughout the book. Instead, it was how Pestalozzi got across his ideas for education. One of his ideas was that children should have the room and the freedom to come up with their own ideas, activities, and answers, and that their ability to reason, judge, and perceive for themselves must be nurtured and encouraged. He also thought that not that they should not only be using their minds to learn, but also they should be able to use their hands and they should be loved. He called this method his hands, heart, and head method. It was also in this book that he helped develop the concept of the object lesson. Now today the object lesson is seen everywhere. For me, one example is that during fourth grade when we were learning about Idaho history, our whole grade got to spend the day out learning how the pioneers lived. We got to spend time trying to rope a cow, which was basically a log with some sticks sticking out for the horns, and we got to try and start a fire with flint and steel. Now his hands, heart, and head method was the basis for his whole educational philosophy. As I said before, he based his philosophy off of Rousseau, and they were pretty similar, except for one thing. Pestalozzi had a great emphasis on the importance of emotions during the learning process. He believed that children should have feelings of self-respect and should be given emotional security. Today, this idea is seen when we tell children that they need to make their own choices and not follow the crowd, that they need to not put themselves down, and that they need to try and become better. In 1799, Pestalozzi finally picked a profession. He decided he wanted to be a teacher and set up a school in Bergdorf where he did not use books. He believed that learning is predominantly about thinking first, then reading. His test results of the students after a year at school were so high that he was able to be over a local higher boys school. He also believed that people should learn how to become teachers, and so he set up a school in Yerevan. Eventually, it became so famous that people from all around the world were coming to visit and to learn from him. Unfortunately, he had to close his school in 1825 due to some economic difficulties. He once wrote to a colleague that what I have here is not what I want. I was looking for a home for poor children, and I'm still looking for it, 
and to that end only my heart is bent. In 1818, Pestalozzi was given the possibility of earning some money from his books that it had been edited. Before getting any of the money from this, he donated 35,000 francs, which is about $590,000 now, to building a house for the poor. When he was in his late 70s, he returned to Newhoff and began building another house for the poor and eventually died at the age of 80. He is now buried next to his school in Newhoff. Though he had a large influence on the people during his life, he has also had a large influence on students today, whether they know it or not. Students today have been touched by teachers who love them and who wish for them to succeed. Teachers all over the world can be found who love their students. In fact, it's very hard to find a teacher who does not love their students. Teachers also use object lessons almost every day to teach a concept. Ever since the 1700s, teachers have been able to put Pestalozzi's ideas to good use. And so, any time that you're sitting in an object lesson, watching or participating, just think about Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi and be grateful for everything that he did for education.